it is one of the most tantalizing possibilities in the story of our species. That modern humans carry a hidden legacy from one of the most successful ancient hominins in history, Homo erectus. For decades, the prevailing view was that Homo erectus was a separate branch of the human family tree, an evolutionary experiment that thrived for over a million years but eventually died out without leaving any direct descendants. Yet new fossil evidence from China, combined with shifting interpretations of the Asian Pleistocene record, is beginning to challenge that view. The discovery of teeth, jaws, and skull fragments from the Hualongdong site in southern China reveals a puzzling combination of ancient and modern traits. This mosaic anatomy, preserved in fossils more than 300,000 years old, suggests that interbreeding between early populations of modern humans and Homo erectus may have occurred in Asia, leaving a genetic imprint that is only now being recognized. The Hualongdong site, first discovered in 2006, has produced the remains of at least 16 individuals who lived during the Middle Pleistocene, roughly 275,000 to 331,000 years ago. This period is a critical yet poorly understood chapter in human evolution. It sits between the first expansion of Homo erectus into Asia nearly two million years ago and the much later arrival of Homo sapiens in the region. For decades, Asia's fossil records seem to tell a straightforward story. Homo erectus arrived early, settled in the region, and eventually disappeared, replaced by incoming modern humans or other archaic groups. But the Hualongdong finds do not fit neatly into that narrative. Early analysis of the skeletons suggested they might simply represent a regional form of East Asian Homo erectus. These hominins, after all, had been present in China since about 1.7 million years ago, and it would not be surprising to find their descendants still living there hundreds of thousands of years later. However, more detailed study revealed a very different picture. The bones and teeth from Hualongdong display a perplexing mix of characteristics, faces with proportions more like modern humans, but limb bones and dental roots more typical of Homo erectus. This unusual combination hints at a population that was neither purely archaic nor fully modern, but something in between. The new study focuses on 21 teeth from the site, and the results are striking. Most of the dental features appear surprisingly modern. The molars, for instance, are relatively small, and the wisdom teeth are reduced in size, much like in Homo sapiens. At the same time, the roots of the molars are thick and robust a feature associated with Homo erectus. This mixture does not seem random, rather it suggests a blending of lineages. The simplest explanation, according to the researchers, is that the ancestors of the Hualongdong people had experienced gene flow with Homo erectus. In other words, they may have been the descendants of unions between Homo erectus and more modern-looking populations. This kind of hybrid ancestry is already well documented for other archaic groups. We know that Neanderthals and Denisovans interbred with the ancestors of modern humans. There is no reason in principle to believe that Homo erectus, if still present in parts of Asia when modern humans or their precursors arrived, would have been immune to the same process. If these populations encountered one another, interbreeding would have been biologically possible, and the Hualongdong teeth may represent the fossilized trace of that union. The Hualongdong site also yielded a near-complete skull known as HLD-6, belonging to a young male who died between the ages of 12 and 13. Initial studies of HLD-6 in 2019 and 2021 showed that the face was surprisingly modern, even resembling the earliest Homo sapiens. But the cranial vault and mandible told a more complicated story. The skull as a whole lacked certain key features that define modern humans, and the jaw, while showing a hint of a chin, did not have the full structure found in Homo sapiens. Instead, it retained aspects common in Middle Pleistocene archaic hominins, including those classified as Homo erectus. When researchers reconstructed a newly discovered fragment of the mandible and compared it with other hominin fossils, they found that HLD-6 fell in an intermediate position. It shared traits with archaic humans from the Middle Pleistocene, with late Pleistocene modern humans, and even with recent Homo sapiens. This mixture of traits reinforces the impression that the 
Hualongdong people were a hybrid population. Their skulls and jaws seem to embody the genetic legacy of multiple lineages, including Homo erectus. The implications of these finds go beyond a single site. In recent years, the Asian fossil record has revealed a dizzying variety of hominins from the same general time frame, including Homo luzonensis in the Philippines, Homo longi in northern China, now thought to be Denisovan, and Homo juluensis in central China, all date to between about 300,000 and 150,000 years ago. Each displays its own unique blend of features, challenging the idea of a simple linear progression from Homo erectus to modern humans. Instead, Asia appears to have been home to multiple evolutionary experiments, some of which may have involved significant interbreeding between different groups. Paleoanthropologists who have studied these patterns in depth argue that the fossil record in Asia points toward a more complex picture of human origins. They suggest that Homo erectus in parts of Asia may never have gone completely extinct before the arrival of modern humans. In places like Java, Indonesia, Homo erectus is known to have survived until at least 108,000 years ago, and possibly much later. Modern humans are believed to have reached nearby Sumatra by about 73,000 years ago. This overlap in time and space creates an obvious opportunity for interbreeding. This reasoning extends to China. Around 300,000 years ago, Homo erectus fossils in the region begin to show new features, such as smoother bicuspid teeth, that were previously associated with modern humans and Neanderthals. These changes could be the result of contact and gene flow with populations that carried such traits. If Homo erectus in China interbred with early modern human relatives, the resulting offspring would have inherited a blend of features, exactly the pattern seen in the Hualongdong fossils. One of the challenges in confirming this hypothesis is that no DNA has yet been recovered from Homo erectus fossils. Their age and the climatic conditions in most of Asia make the preservation of genetic material unlikely. Without direct genetic evidence, the case for interbreeding rests on morphology, the shapes and structures of the fossils themselves. This is not as definitive as DNA, but when the traits consistently fall between two known populations, hybridization becomes a plausible explanation. However, emerging techniques in paleoproteomics, the extraction of ancient proteins from fossilized remains, may eventually allow scientists to detect Homo erectus genetic signals indirectly. Proteins can survive much longer than DNA, and if they can be sequenced from teeth or bones, they may reveal patterns of relatedness that are invisible in the morphological record alone. Another intriguing angle involves the enigmatic Denisovans. Known mainly from genetic data and a few fragmentary fossils, Denisovans are thought to have interbred with the ancestors of modern populations in Asia and Oceania. The only known Denisovan skull shares notable similarities with Homo erectus, raising the possibility that the two may have been closely related, or even part of the same lineage. If Denisovans were indeed an evolved form of Homo erectus, then interbreeding between them and modern humans is already a proven fact since Denisovan DNA survives in present-day people from Papua New Guinea, Australia, and parts of East and Southeast Asia. If this link is correct, the genetic contributions of Homo erectus to modern humans would be hiding in plain sight, already identified under the label Denisovan. This would also mean that the Hualongdong fossils could represent a population on the spectrum between Homo erectus and Denisovans, with features inherited from both, and possibly passed on to our own lineage. Peking Man, who lived in China between roughly 400,000 and 750,000 years ago, was a woodworking, fire-using, spear-hafting hominid who mysteriously liked to drill holes into objects for unknown reasons. And these hominids, a form of Homo erectus, appear to have been quite meticulous about their clothing, using stone tools to soften and depress animal hides, according to a recent report in Live Science. The new discoveries paint a picture of a human ancestor who was more sophisticated than previously believed. The archaeologists found evidence through the useware analysis that Peking man was working wood, which didn't preserve in the cave, with their stone tools, possibly to turn it into wooden tools.
and analysis of the base of Peking Man's stone tools reveal that the hominid likely attached stone points to sticks, creating a sort of spear. Perhaps the strangest finding was evidence for drilling. Archaeologists say they don't know what the hominids were drilling into or why, but they were certainly engaging in it with their stone tools. There is no evidence so far that Peking Man made ornaments, or what we would consider art, however. Finally, the analysis shows that Peking Man had an interest in clothes. A certain proportion of tools were being used for the working and scraping of hides, archaeologists say. If they are depressing the hides, if they are softening hides, they can use the hides for their clothes, something no cold-weather hominids would dare live without. Taken together, the teeth, jaws and skulls from Hualongdong, along with other recent Asian discoveries, suggest that human evolution in Asia was far from a straightforward replacement scenario. Instead of one species supplanting another, the evidence points toward a complex web of interactions, with interbreeding occurring whenever populations overlapped in time and space. Homo erectus, far from being an evolutionary dead end, may have been an active participant in this network of gene flow, contributing traits that persisted in later populations. This model aligns with what we now know from Europe and Africa, where genetic and fossil evidence has confirmed repeated episodes of mixing between different human groups. The difference is that in Asia, the lack of preserved DNA has made the story harder to piece together. The Hualongdong fossils provide a rare morphological bridge across the gap, showing in their own anatomy the signatures of ancient encounters. Researchers emphasize that much of Asia remains unexplored in paleoanthropological terms. Vast regions of Africa and Southeast Asia have yielded no ancient human bones at all, despite abundant evidence of occupation from stone tools. The entire Indian subcontinent, for example, has produced only a single significant ancient human fossil. Until more sites are excavated and more fossils are analysed, the full extent of the role of Homo erectus in our ancestry will remain uncertain. Whatever the case, the trend is clear. Each new discovery adds another piece to a puzzle that is growing more complex and more interesting with every find. Far from being isolated in separate evolutionary tracks, different human groups in Asia appear to have met, mixed and shaped each other's destinies. The Hualongdong teeth and skulls may be some of the clearest evidence yet that Homo erectus was part of that story. The traditional model of a single origin for Homo sapiens in Africa, followed by a clean dispersal and replacement of archaic populations elsewhere, is becoming increasingly difficult to defend. The Asian record, with its overlapping populations and hybrid fossils, points toward a more braided stream of human evolution, in which multiple lineages contributed to the final form of our species. This does not diminish the importance of Africa as the cradle of humanity, but it does suggest that the final shaping of modern humans involved contributions from outside Africa as well. If Homo erectus was among those contributors, then their legacy lives on not just in the archaeological record, but in our own bodies. Traits they evolved in distant times and places may still be expressed in the bones, teeth and faces of their distant descendants. The story of the Hualongdong people is more than a tale of strange teeth and puzzling skulls. It is a reminder that evolution is not a neat, linear process, but a dynamic interplay of migration, isolation and reconnection. Homo erectus may have been one of the great survivors of human history, persisting in parts of Asia long after they had vanished elsewhere and meeting the ancestors of modern humans in a series of encounters that left their mark on both. The evidence from the Hualongdong fossils, small, modern-like molars with thick archaic roots, a youthful face with a blend of ancient and modern proportions, a jaw that almost but not quite has a chin, tells a story of mixture and shared heritage. Whether through direct interbreeding or more complex demographic processes, the legacy of Homo erectus may still flow in our veins. As new methods bring ancient proteins to light, and as more fossils emerge from the ground, we may finally be able to confirm what the bones have been whispering for centuries. That we are not only the children of Africa, but also the heirs of Homo erectus. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe and let us know what you think in the comments.